Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at scheduling tasks using the Whenever gem. So the Whenever gem will allow you to run Linux cron scheduled tasks through your Rails application. And this is something that you can schedule to run on a daily, an hourly, a minutely, whatever you need basis. Uh, but more importantly, this is something you can schedule to run even if your Rails application is offline. So the way that this works is you set up the whenever gem. The whenever gem will add your scheduled task into your cron tab, and then your uh, Linux system will run your cron tab tasks whenever uh, it, it's scheduled to. So what this means is you'll first need to check and make sure that you actually have a cron added to your Linux system. So in my case, what I can do is I can run a sudo service cron status. I can see the cron is running. If cron wasn't running, so let's say it's stopped, uh, my status would then say it's not running. And if I don't have it, I would then need to do something like sudo apt install cron to install it. But because I already have it, this isn't gonna do anything. So in my case, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to type sudo service cron start to start my uh, command scheduler. Once that's done, we can then run a bundle add to add the whenever gem to our Rails application. And then once that's done, we can then add the uh, whenevererize command to our application as well. And what this is going to do is create our initial config. So we can run a bundle ex exec whenever rise, and you wanna do this for dot because it's for this application's directory. And you'll see that creates a config schedule.rb. So let's come into our config and our schedule.rb. And in here you have some boilerplate comments. Now these comments just sort of go over the basic structure for cron uh, syntax but there are a couple gotchas if you're not familiar with how it works. So we're gonna start pretty basic. We're gonna start with one of these commands. So we'll type every one dot minutes do end, and then we'll just do something like a uh, runner and then a puts command. So we'll say puts, and then we'll put hello world inside of single quotes. So the reason why we're doing this is because any command that you put in here inside of your runner needs to be in quotes, even if it's a puts command or a model command, as you can see up here, it needs to be inside of quotes. The issue with doing this is if we try to run this, which we can do using a uh, couple commands, the first one we'll do is the crontab r command. And the reason why we're doing this is because this will clear our crontab. We can then run a whenever space dash dash update dash cron tab. And this will just add whatever's in our uh, schedule file into our cron tab. To check what's in there already, we can run the whenever command. You can see there's five asterisks with a bin bash command that runs all the way through here. You can see the environment is production and then it is just executing that code and it's escaping all of the quotes as needed. Now, the issue with this is whenever we run our Rails server, uh, this command is not going to run because this actually isn't putsing out the hello world to our console. So in order to get this to actually have an output we can see, we're gonna need to do something a little bit extra. And what we can do for this is right at the top here, we can set the output. And we wanna set this to be, uh, if we open up our side panel here, we can see that we have our application with a logs directory. We don't really talk about the logs on the channel that much, but in here you have your development logs, your production logs, and all that other stuff. So we'll just put it in here. So we'll just put it inside of dot slash log slash cron dot log, and then we can save that. Now to reset this, we're gonna to have to run our cron tab dash r to clear our cron tab. And then we can run our whenever dash dash update dash cron tab. Now, whenever the minute rolls over, we should see this get added into a file here inside of our logs directory. If I go over to Google, I'll just look for the current time. Actually, we can see it right here. It'll just update right here. 
and we can see that created a cron file. Now, the first thing you'll notice is our hello world is here, which is good, but we're getting this weird noticed was unable to bootstrap correctly as the database is unavailable. The reason for this is like I spoiled earlier, when we type the whenever command and we full screen this, we are running this in the production environment, but we don't have a production server set up. So ideally we would uh, change this to run in development. And the way we can do that is with another command and let me actually add in some comments to our schedule file here so that we can keep track of the commands we're using. So we have the command to clear our cron tab. We have the command to update our whenever cron tab. Now we're going to add one more, and this is going to be the command we can use to update our cron tab with a set uh, environment. So we'd still do the whenever dash dash update dash cron tab, but now we pass in dash dash set with environment equal to, and then your desired environment in single quotes. So in this case, the command will look like this. We just call whenever, update the cron tab, set the environment to development, and then we can run this. And now if we wait for this to tick over and we come in here, so once this is at uh, 56, we should see another notice in here that hopefully clears things up. I'll just go ahead and save this while we're waiting and there we go it just ticked over so now we should get a third thing in here and this time we only have hello world we don't have the uh, noticed was unable to do stuff error so that's working as we would expect now a good thing to do in here just to make sure that we're getting the right time is to start off with a runner that just puts the time dot now that way your uh, scheduler block has the time the other thing I like to do in here is just puts the uh, current environment. And while we're waiting, uh, we can talk about the whenever commands output. So if we type whenever in here, you'll see we currently have three different things. So the uh, first one here is the uh, time.now. The second one is the Rails environment. And the third is the hello world. And all three of them start with these uh, five asterisks. Now that is the cron syntax. And if we come over to Google, if we open up a uh, search, we can find a formatter for cron expressions like this one. So this is freeformatter.com. I used this at my previous job where we were paid six to seven figures to deal with cron syntax and schedulers. Uh, meanwhile, Rails handles it out of a box with a gem, but whatever. Uh, the issue is we were using quartz, which is a variation of your cron scheduling, but this is going to use the quartz cron scheduler format, which has seven asterisks. Now, this is nice if you're using quartz. It's like a, honestly just a lifesaver because you can just check a couple boxes for how often you want your task to repeat and it'll just generate it for you. So if I change this first asterisk here to like a five, we can even hit describe expression and it'll tell you that this is at the second five of every minute. So every minute, five seconds in, this task would run. Unfortunately, because this is with the seven asterisk syntax, if we try and convert this to the five that we have here, and we hit describe expression, we'll get an error. So for this, you're going to want to come to something like crontab.guru, where you can do something similar and try to figure out what syntax you'd like. So maybe we set this to an asterisk and an asterisk, and now it says every minute. Maybe we want it to run uh, only on the, the first minute, the first hour, the first day, the first month, and the January, right? So this is your basic syntax here. Now you can set stuff like step values, you can set ranges, those will all work. Uh, your other option is this uh, crontab.cronhub.io, which also has a similar format that explains how some of these things work. But okay, so that is sort of how I come up with my schedules. I just go into some tool that helps me figure it out. But let's say I want this to run every day and I want it to run every day at the 23rd hour and 50, oops, 59 minutes into it then I would do something similar to this. Now you'll notice in here, we're running this every minute. 
Uh, the reason is this syntax doesn't give you access to the second. So that is something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker though. You really shouldn't be scheduling stuff down to the seconds in most cases. And there are other plugins you can use for second based inputs, but okay. We're gonna open up our console. We're gonna hit control L and then we're gonna type whenever and we'll take a look at this. So this is all of our current stuff in here. Let's run a cron tab dash R and then we'll run our cron tab update cron tab and then we'll, we'll run our whenever command again just to make sure it's in here. Now that that's done, we can come into our cron log and this time must have just ticked over. And you can see now it's saying, hello world, this is the development environment and it fired at 5.01 a.m. because I'm doing this at 5 a.m. like an absolute degenerate. Okay, so that handles all of that, but of course you're gonna wanna do more than just output stuff. So how do you actually grab like a, a method from a model? That might be a good thing to cover. Of course, because this is all Ruby, you can do pretty much anything you want, but we'll cover something like calling a category method. So we'll say category dot method name, I don't know. And then we'll come over here, we'll open up our app, our models and our category dot RB. And then inside of our category, we can do something like a, we can do something like a method. Uh, we'll make this off of the class. So we'll say self dot scheduled underscore category. And then in here, we'll do something like category.create. We'll give it a name, which we'll set equal to scheduled at, and then we'll do time.now. Uh, and then the other thing we can do is give this a display underscore in underscore nav set to true. This will just cause it to be visible in our nav bar once it's created so that we can see it right away. So we'll go ahead and we'll save this category. We'll come into our schedule, we'll save this. And then we'll come into our command line and we'll do a cron tab dash R and then we'll update our cron tab. And then we'll go ahead and type a rails S and open up our log. So I'll just go ahead and clear this and save this. And then we can come over here and refresh. So if we open up our categories drop down here, you can see we have finance, general, uncategorized and more, which just takes us to our categories page. What we're gonna have happen here is it's going to create a scheduled category and then when we refresh, we'll have the category in our dropdown. But of course, we forgot to set the method name. So thankfully, our errors here are getting logged. So that makes it a lot easier. So what we can do is come into our category.rb, copy the method name, come in here, paste in the method name. And then after the minute rolls over again, we'll have the uh, category hopefully created. All right, we've now had it fire off. And if I now refresh and we click on categories, you'll see our scheduled category appear. Now, the important thing to note is whenever you make a change to your schedule.rb, you're gonna need to run those uh, two commands, your cron tab dash R and then your whenever update set environment. That said, this pretty much covers the basics here. You could of course change this to one dot hours or one dot days or one dot weeks or one dot months. You get the idea. I am using minutes here just because it's a lot easier to test. Uh, but then if you come over to the uh, GitHub repo for the whenever gem, you can find some other examples where they even do stuff like run rake tasks uh, through the scheduler. They also create their own custom job types. So there's a lot here that you can do. Uh, even aside from the runner, you can see here if I scroll in, so you don't need a magnifying glass, but they run commands with a task and an output. They run rate commands. They even run custom scripts with environment variables and stuff like that. So it's really up to you what to use. Uh, I know that this gem doesn't really get updated all that often. I think the last update here on main was um, looks like three years ago, but it still works. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but yeah, I would suggest looking at the GitHub repo and trying to incorporate this whenever you need to do any sort of scheduling. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.